choose the families that we were born in, amen. But one we can choose is the body of Christ, amen. amen. And so we are all God's children. And so Pastor Roberts and I have been praying and meditating, and he said earlier that we were going to start a fa um, a series called Family Matters. And you know, family does matter. Sometimes you, you're in a family, you don't think they care, or they're concerned about your feelings. But yes we, yes, we do, because we pray, even when you don't even know we're praying for you, because you are part and you're connected to this family, amen. And so I was happy when Pastor Roberts, you know, asked me to, to uh, minister, to start, the family matters, amen. And so that means that I can start and he may come and, and, and clean up a little something or add something, you know. But this morning, I'm gonna make the ladies. If you're a lady, hold your hand up. I'm talking about a young woman. Hallelujah, now, y'all got your hands up and raise them. I'm gonna need your help throughout this sermon. Because if some men try to get some stones and try to throw them up at me, I want y'all to help me. I want, I want you to have my back. Now, I don't care in what state you are in, but whatever state you're in, I want you to be content in it. But I want you to listen. So I'm not talking to any particular person. Uh, you know, you may be married, you may be single, you may be widowed, you may be divorced, you may even be separated. So wherever you are, just get in where you fit in. Hallelujah. But there are some five things that God put in my spirit this morning for me to minister. And so if you're taking notes, the, uh, my subject is just Family Matters Part 1. Amen. But one of the things, there are some five things that I believe in my spirit that we as women, we need. You know, there was a movie that came out, What a Woman Wants. And it was a man, his name was Mel Gibson. And he was like in advertising and he had to go home and try on a lot of different things and some lipsticks and pantyhose and some kind of way he fell in the tub. And he got like electrocuted. And then he was able to tell you what he, 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 could, he could read the thoughts and the minds of a woman. And he was able to, you know, know exactly what we were thinking. But do you not know that in the natural, men don't just know what we're thinking? Because they hadn't been electrocuted with that kind of foolishness. Because that was the movies. So look at your neighbor and say, now that was the movies. And I'm talking about real life this morning. So there are five things that I believe we as women that we need. One is that we need affection. You know, we needed it when we were single. We needed affection when we were babies because our mothers nurtured and cared for us. As we grow up as children, our children need affection. So we need affection. My second point this morning is that a woman needs some good conversation. We need some conversation. Third, a woman needs honesty and openness in every area of her life. And then my fourth point, a woman needs financial security. We got to have financial security. Look at your name and say, honey, if it's your, if it's your husband, just say, baby, uh, 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 we need, I need financial security. <laughs> And then finally, a woman needs to know that her man is committed to family. She needs to know that. She needs to know that. I want us to go to 1 Peter 3 and 7. You know, um, some of these, some I'm going to jot in, I'm going to just throw it in for free. You know, we need to, uh, I, I, we need to know that we're honored that our contribution in our marriages or in our families is important. You know, we need to know how much you value us because something that you value, you take real good care of. 
You know, it's some folks out there valuing their car this morning because they're out there washing it and not in church. Some folks value their job more than they value church. Some folks value their yard because they're out there cutting it because they say ain't no other day I could do it but on Sunday. Can't do it on Saturday because I'm watching the game. So whatever you pay a lot of attention to, that's what you value. But this morning, man, I want you to look at your wife or your spouse or your woman, your girlfriend, your snooky, your pookie, and say, I value you. Everything in you is good because we are of some value. Amen. First Peter 3 and 7, amen. It says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. See, I ain't talking, I'm talking about we have to begin to verbalize how important we, we are. I want, I want you, Henry, in Atlanta, if you could hear me. I want you to tell folks in public how much you love me, how much you esteem me, how much value I add to you. Hallelujah. Because if you live in a nice house and you got a raggedy one on the side, your value has depreciated. And see, I'm very valuable. And see, I want him to appreciate me because every time he appreciates me, my value goes up. And every time my value goes up, it's like, suck it, suck it now. Come on. Hallelujah. You can ask and you can get hallelujah. Just keep valuing me. I'm like a well-driven car. You know, I know it depreciates when you drive it off the lot, but the more you put in it, the more compliments you shower and you throw on me. Shoot, I could be big as 350 pounds, but I'm walking like I'm 60. Hallelujah. Because I feel so good, hallelujah, because of how you see me. See, and a lot of women, we get our value on, based on how you see us. If we go home and you don't see nothing, that's the same thing with a man. If he, if he don't feel like you value him, he ain't finna stay. A dog ain't gonna keep coming home and you won't feed it. He gonna go down the street and try to find somebody that's gonna feed him a little bit better. But we're very valuable. We're valuable to God. And I'm not talking about fake compliments. Don't be fake telling me some mess you don't even mean. That doesn't build me up, that tears me down because that hinders my self-esteem. And anything that comes to take away from me is not God. That's of the devil. And don't be used by the devil in your relationships. Amen. Look at your name and say, don't be used by the devil in your relationship. 